Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another What Would You Change podcast. We are the Super Monkey Fighters. I am Loki, here with Monkey Feathers, and Papa Nugget, who is still alive. As are the rest of us. So, by hair. By, by just the hair. Uh, also a hairier Papa Nugget. That's probably what saved his life, is the beard. Yeah. This week, we are doing Silence of the Lamps. If you don't know what this film is, it is a the story of a young FBI cadet who re- must receive the help of an incarcerated and manipulative cannibal killer to catch another serial killer, a madman who skins his victims. This uh, film was directed by Jonathan Demme, uh, written by Thomas Harris. It was uh, based on his novel. Uh, the screenplay was written by Ted Talley. Uh, stars Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins, Scott Glenn... Let's see, Buffalo Bill is played by Ted Levine. That's his name. There's a few other names that pop up. Roger Corman uh, shows up in this. Let's see, Chris Isaac. It's strange. This is one of those that they're people who have names at the beginning who were kind of names in 91, but they have very small parts. Like, really, this movie is is Jodie Foster and uh, Anthony Hopkins. It's well, and Ted Levine. Ted Levine. Like, like those three um, are the main prominent characters in this. Yeah. Where should we start today with our likes? This is one uh, I've always liked. And I think it's just because it's like a kind of a thriller type movie, but not like a horror slasher jump scare in your face type movie. It's one that kind of makes you think. I think the plot's done pretty well to kind of keep you on edge throughout. I really like Anthony Hopkins character. He's, I I, I don't know how to describe him, but it's, he's like creepy and you know, he's like a bad guy, but like you kind of like him at the same time or you at least find him interesting enough that you want him to, to be a big part of the, the film. Yeah, you want to follow him more. You don't necessarily want him to win or yeah. you agree with, with, with his, his, his uh, you don't necessarily agree with him, but you're interested in him. It's one of the things that I like a lot with this one is the uh, that dynamic with uh, Hannibal Lecter and Clarice Starling. Well, I mean, he's trying to, like, he sees her kind of as a, a student of his, right? He's kind of, it's, he's kind of self adopted her as kind of his mentee, more or less. Like, he's the, like, he has the answers, and, but, yeah. but, but he's using her at the same time, kind of to his own ends for his own uh, devices, I guess, so to speak, or at least pulling with her. Like, he gets satisfaction out of kind of playing with her. Yeah, it's it's interesting because, like, that relationship, I kind of, I like it because it's interesting and it's fascinating where you have this serial killer who is a psychologist or a therapist to Clarice, where you kind of wouldn't have expected it, but he took a liking to her. And so he's trying to gain information from her, just about her life and her early days of why she kind of wanted to go to the FBI, what happened to her on a farm and things like that. So, And I think a lot of it is, I think he sees her as kind of like hurt or has some like emotional baggage, whatever you want to call it from her past. And I almost feel like him as a character like he, he he does his more devious deeds against like people that quote unquote deserve it. He he does have that code. Like uh, you know, I I'm I, I'm nodding more in agreement, and and you know, you're it's spurring ideas. Cause but the, but does, then I think of the I think of the like the the guards too at the same yeah. time. Like, he has a code that. But he still wants to escape. Like he doesn't and, want to be behind bars anymore. Yeah. So. It's the balance he, that he kind of portrays. Yeah, and it's it's the it's a thing that's portrayed a lot in in media as well with with people who are very intelligent. Um, that they see anybody who's not as intelligent as them as 
uh, animals, but he doesn't very much have the that code of honor because that's the, one of the, the the first scene with them where he, you know, one of the other inmates does something uh, as Clarice is le- leaving does something very disgusting to her, and so Hannibal Lecter one gives what she wants a little bit and then punishes the uh, the, the guilty other, man, the, the, yeah, the other uh, prisoner, and so. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of you know, and that's the ending scene as well. To jump ahead to that, it's Doctor Chilton. He you know he has this, the famous line, "I'm having an old friend for dinner." <laughs> it's he, he's following his psychiatrist, who is not a good person, is not a good psychiatrist, is has been his adversary, uh, an unworthy adversary the entire time. So it's that's that code that he has. That's that's interesting. It's more than just he's a good or a bad guy. It's he's just evil and it's right. That's the way it is. So, yeah. And I think that's, that's what makes him a good character. Like they kind of try and develop that depth to him that he becomes interesting or like yeah. you're unsure. Like, is like, do I, do I want to like this guy? Like, do I not? Like he's terrifying, but like, he's interesting, yeah. but kind of speaking to like Buffalo Bill, and I think I think he, he treats his victims the way he does because I don't think he can emotionally deal with them as people. Yeah, the way that it appears to appeared to me is yeah, and that's that's the difference with them. It's it's a similar kind of a concept, but it's you know Buffalo Bill's not overly intelligent. He's just he can't manage what he's doing, and that's how he's coping. With it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he just chooses to to treat them like objects because if he, if he look, lets them in as people, then he probably can't commit the atrocious acts that he's has been doing. Buffalo bill is more interesting than a lot of the other characters in this movie. And he does weird and crazy standoutish things that I find entertaining outside of him being a, you know, murderous psychopath. Uh, which is the same way I feel about Hannibal Lecter. Like Hannibal Lecter is not someone who should be idolized, mm-hmm. but he's interesting and you want to, he's captivating you. You want to see what he's going to do and follow his story because, because of that. So that's, that's where I like Buffalo Bill as a, as an interesting character to watch, not someone to idolize. So I don't, I don't feel like thing, Buffalo so. Bill is characters as deep though. It's not as deep. He's just, it's not as explored. I would say like there's Mm -hmm. um, in the, the Hannibal Lecter movies, I think they do a bit of more of a disservice to Buffalo bill than they do with some of the other killers as they, they follow things like they develop those characters more where Buffalo bills more just on the surface. And there was actually some controversy when this came out with the characterization of him as, um, as a gay man or as a transsexual or as whatever he was going through, it was very controversial and offensive and people protested the movie. Um, and, and the which is interesting it, so. because even in the movie, they kind of pointed out that he's not transgender. He just thought that he should be. Yeah. And it's, it's just kind of glossed over, but more of it's just the, the, the stereotypical characterizations where yeah. he's the way that he speaks and, and the, he's got the little dog and just, some of those kinds of things that, you know, is controversial at the time. But to me, that's what makes him interesting because he's not, he's not those things. He's trying to be those things. He's he acting doesn't know to be he's those acting. things. Yeah. He's acting in his own world, in his own life. And it's kind of more of a negative or a flub kind of a thing, but I still, it's one of those silly things when he's holding the business cards and Clarice realizes who he is and pulls the gun out. Like the way that he runs away from her is just weird and stupid. And like I, I said out loud, I was like, how did you get away from the cops? Well, I just kind of sauntered away while I flopped business cards. And <laughs> you just, like, it's just, a. it's not like, you know, the bad guy running away, like, but then he goes down and he's, he's got his like little labyrinth and it's just, there's more interest there that I want to know more of his backstory but they don't go into it and they, they, cause they spend the time with Hannibal Lecter and Clarice. And so that's where, cause those are the characters you're supposed to care about. So that's, I want to know more. We don't know more Hannibal Lecter. I want to know more and we do get those. So it's, that's, that's my thoughts on, on Buffalo bill. 
Plus, he's very quotable. And <laughs> the quotes from this movie, in the, the short term, I think we're all Hannibal Lecter with the fava beans and the... <laughs> but long term, I think it's Buffalo Bill. If you know any quote from this movie, it's it puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. I mean, it's it's the Buffalo Bill quotes that I think stand out. So anyway. It's interesting with this movie, and it's actually kind of one of the, it's one like that I have. And it's the portrayal of kind of two different serial killers. Because you have Hannibal Lecter, who is very smart. He's a doctor. He is very calm and collected when it comes to him talking to people. And then you have Buffalo Bill, the idea that, well, if someone's a serial killer, then there's something wrong with their mind. Or things like that. And I think with Buffalo Bill, it's kind of more more shown. Yeah, and Hannibal's in control where Buffalo, Buffalo Bill is not. Yeah. And yeah. just how they treat their victims. Because you have, granted, Clarice isn't a victim. But you have Hannibal Lecter and how he talks to her. And even the ending scene where you have Hannibal saying that he's going to have a friend for dinner. It's not an out of control act from Hannibal where he's lashing out and he's just acting on raw rage where you have Buffalo Bill where he's in the movie. It was phrased as the deaths of the women were just were just a result of what he wanted because Buffalo Bill what he, wanted what he coveted. Yeah, because Buffalo Bill wanted to be a woman. And so he was taking the skin of women and the fact that they were dying was just just a side, of, a side, a side effect, a side consequence to what he wanted. And so it's just, it's an interesting portrayal in this movie that you do get an inside look into two different minds of a serial killer. Yeah, Hannibal Lecter is intellectually driven and Buffalo Bill's emotionally driven. It's He wants to feel a certain way, so that's what drives his emotions, and he reacts mm-hmm. based off of an emotional uh, uh, events because they get kind of into his backstory as, as to how Hannibal and him have a connection. Uh, one of Buffalo Bill's lovers was a patient of Hannibal Lecter's, and Hannibal found his body because um, he had shown up to three sessions, and he went looking for him. But you know, Buffalo Bill killed him out of rage because there was an argument because of Buffalo Bill killing a transient (laughs) like and it was you know something happened that made him feel bad that's what he did and then he started coveting what he wanted to be so he could feel normal and that's where he not or what he thought he should feel because it's convoluted to that but he's he's driven by his emotions where Hannibal Lecter is cool and calm and collected because he's driven by his intellect and he plots and schemes and he doesn't let his emotions dictate what he does and so that's the contrast with them that's because even his his relationship with Clarice is very much that intellectual like his his final call is I mean people have talked a lot about how that's more he he falls in love with her but it's uh, it's really self-preservation he knows that if he has someone on his side like he, he calls her up and is just like the world's more interesting with a you in it. I hope you have the same thoughts for me. And she's like, I can't, you know, I can't I that. have to, I have to come and get you. Like I have to, I can't let you live in the world. I've always kind of looked at it as like a respect. Like he respects her as another human being. And I guess, as you mentioned, a formidable foe because his therapist isn't that his therapist yeah. has just, he's a, he's a petty little being to Hannibal and Hannibal's going to get rid of him. Whereas Clarice has shown formidable skills in what she does. And I think it's more of a respect to me. That's the film is those two, the, uh, the actors as well as that, those per, the, their performances and, and that relationship. Cause outside of it, yeah, that's you think too film. hard about if, if, if you think too hard about a lot of the things outside of that, you're kind of like, wow, this is really dumb. <laughs> like people aren't smart that's one of the things I like with those, those two is how they connect and how, I mean, even the, the blurb that Hannibal Lecter is the mani- the manipulative one, but Clarice isn't dumb. Like she can't see the answers. She know he ha- knows he has the answers. And rather than trying to find them herself, she's just trying to manipulate him into giving her the answers. But that it stood out to me a lot more as how Clarice played her part to manipulate Hannibal because she was being manipulated by Hannibal and by her boss 
because he was lying to her about things to try and get information. And, you know, if she knew he cannibal would find it out, blah, 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 all those kinds of reasonings. But, you know, I don't think she's as innocent and fragile as she makes herself out to be. Yeah. It's interesting that you talk about Clarice being smart because I agree that she's smart, but one of the things that I, I wish this movie did was have her figure things out more on her own and rely less on Hannibal because it always felt like she just couldn't figure it out. And it wasn't that she was trying to manipulate Hannibal into giving her what she wanted. It just felt like she didn't know the answer. And I, I, I wish that with that, all of her just trying to figure out the case, she figured out the case more on her own and less reliant upon him because She's going into the FBI and you don't have access to a serial killer on tap. Just be like, hey, what's the answer? It's like she's using the resources she has at her disposal. And And, and that's true. But even then, it just it it to me, it came off more as her being less smart and just trying to rely upon someone who's smarter than her. And and it's not always that way, but it just. A lot of the times it was just, hey, what's the answer? What is, how do I figure out who Buffalo Bill is? What's in the case file that'll tell me what it is? Again, she might, as you had said, she might be manipulating Hannibal into just giving her the answer. But it kind of portrays her as being a less adequate FBI agent in my eyes because she's not going out to, she's not going through the case files and trying to figure it out on her own. Yeah, so so the comparison that I would make is um, what Nugget pointed out with Fargo, where uh, when I said kind of that the cops seem like they're bumbling and, and kind of more uh, moronic and, you know, Nugget, you said, uh, I forget her name, uh, Margie. You're like, no, she's yeah. mm-hmm. she's doing her job and she's smart and she's following up on leads. And it's like, that's what Clarice isn't doing. She sees Hannibal in this situation as being cooperative so that he should just give her the answers. Hannibal looked at the case file and and, and knew his history with, with the guy and had his profile and could draw conclusions and then he was withholding them. And rather than Clarice looking through and figuring those things out, which is what Hannibal was trying to get her to do, she just wanted him to tell her. And that's where it comes across as more bumbling. Like if they didn't have Hannibal as a, as a resource to use, she would have looked through and been like, Oh, well, why did they weigh down? Why did he weigh down the first body? Well, cause he was learning. It was new. It didn't drift, which means it's probably close. He's probably within that area. We should focus around that area and figure things out. Like, you know, she, she didn't put the work in because she had a resource that she thought was going to be cooperative that wasn't really being cooperative. And so, and if I, she just try and figure it out, it would be a less interesting movie. Because yeah. well, I, I and that's that's kind of the 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 push and pull of it. Because yeah, it'd be a less interesting movie, but it does kind of portray her as being a less of an adequate FBI agent because she just wants to take the easy road. It, it ultimately, yeah, the movie's not about. Really, the movie's not about catching Buffalo Bill. It's about Hannibal Lecter and, and Clarice and Hannibal's escape because they spend more time on Hannibal and his escape. And that's to me where the movie kind of goes off off kilter a bit is, yeah, Hannibal's smart and all, but everybody else is just way too dumb. And that's how he gets away. Like He goes from like a maximum security psychiatric facility to a the weird courthouse. cage in a gymnasium. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I never understood that. <laughs> yeah. And it was, or, it, it's there for the shock value. And that's where it, you know, he's like, why is this the case? What? They built yeah, a like special a cage to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a platform. And then somehow he stole the pen from Chilton. Which isn't and, ever shown because they can't show it. Cause then it wouldn't be well, logical. I'm, and then somehow he only gets a little piece of metal off of it rather than has the whole pen. And But meanwhile, he's sitting in this cage with like tape recorders and he has all these luxuries now where it's like you've got so many other things where you didn't need that pen to MacGuffin away. Like when he's looking at the pen, it's sitting on, a, on his bed in his cell and he's chained to a dolly with, you know, a thing over his face like. There's no way he could have gotten that pen. And and we know it. The only way to do it is just off screen. Ha, ah, he's got it. And we'll have him look at it. And then you'll know that he got it. And you're just like, 
sometimes filmmakers are lazy and rather than <laughs> figuring out those kinds of mysteries, it's easier to just be like, uh, oh, just show them this thing and let them figure it out on their own. That's off screen closure. And that's, that's good filmmaking. It's like, no, it's lazy and stupid. Cause as soon as you start thinking about it, it pulls you out of the movie. So this has some amazing sequences and some, some amazing shots. The night vision sequence, um, with Clarice and Buffalo bill, it's that tension where it's, it's scary, but it's not horror. You're not like, this film does have those elements where there's, you know, decomposing bodies in bathtubs and disemboweled people hanging from weird cages and things like that. Like it has those elements, but that scene is, those aren't scary, but Clarice alone in the dark Buffalo bill watching her stumble around and trying to figure things out. Like it provides at one point tension. Time she touches the furnace and it's hot and she's like, ah, and she's, you know, she's tripping over things. Like it's, you know, you identify with her in that moment is stumbling around in the dark, terrified, you know, trying to act tough, like that help is on the way, but knowing that no one knows where she is. And if she doesn't get, get Buffalo bill that she's dead and everybody else is dead. Like, you know, he gets away and that's that. So that scene's done very well. One that's not done so well is Hannibal's escape. when he's attacking the two guards, like there's a, jump cut where he goes from down on the floor with one officer to like at the screen. (laughs) And you're just like, okay. Like always that shot has always taken me out of that scene to where I'm just like, what the hell just happened? Why? What? And then uh, like, it takes me a minute to get back into what's going on. And it's like, all right, that's okay. I don't know how he got to where he, where he was at, but now he's like vampire. There's a missing movement in the shot and it's just, it's the way that it's edited together and snorri cam would be the way to do it where the camera's attached to him and you see you follow his face as he moves in, into that scene but it's just that quick little cut from cuz he goes from being down on the ground to lunging at the camera and you're like wait a minute how did he how did he traverse that distance there, yeah. there's just not that transitionary shot that's in there and it was something that i put down as it's not a necessarily negative but it's not necessarily a positive it was just the close up shots because yeah. it focuses a lot more on the actor and where nowadays it would provide potentially like wider shots to get both the actors in the scenes or maybe less of a close-up on the face to where this one, it had a lot of face close-ups. And it, it makes relative sense because you're trying to get how these characters are feeling based on what's going on in the scene. But it was just, it was interesting seeing just how many close-up shots of someone's face was in this as opposed to wider shots or mid shots. It's interesting to understanding cameras and lenses and how they work. Hannibal Lecter, they use very, very close up extreme. I mean, you're right in on his face. Yeah. Clarice, you use close ups, but it's a little bit further back. So it's not as uncomfortable. Like with Hannibal, it's shot in a way to make you feel uncomfortable with Clarice. It's shot in a way to make you feel to, to identify with sympathy, more. like sympathy, you're more sympathetic towards her because, you know, if it if <laughs> you get that close to anybody's face with, uh, you know, a, a wider angle lens or a telephoto lens, like it, it distorts the face and it looks weird. And it's, you know, depending on how that how you're doing that and just how it's framed up, like you do that with Jodie Foster, you're going to think Jodie Foster is a serial killer just as much as Anthony Hopkins is. So <laughs> nugget. We went through your likes and we've gone through some of our dislikes. What was things stood out negatively to you? I think you might have some, some things on that. The soundtrack didn't really stand out to me on this one. It seemed like really run of the mill, um, which was. I think that, I think that's kind of sad because given that it's done by Howard Shore, and he was the composer who composed Lord of the Rings, which I think are amazing pieces of score. And then I saw that he did this and thought, oh, uh, it, okay. Yeah. I mean, granted, it was it was 10 I, years before Lord of the Rings, so time, time and experience changes you, but... It's funny because you bring it up, and I think the only thing that stood out to me about soundtrack was towards the end when she's before she, when she first meets Buffalo Bill, the soundtrack just kind of had more of a sad, desperate feel to it. Like, but that's the only time I remember hearing the soundtrack. Like it was, outside of that, it was like, it just was, it was there. It doesn't or it wasn't. stand it's out like, at all. Yeah. It's just kind of filler so, music. 
but that one, like I said, that one scene, I was like, okay, this is, it's not big and, and orchestral or, or memorable, but right now I do feel the same kind of stress that Clarice is probably feeling. So one thing that stood out to me as a big negative, um, because it was noticeable and it's more noticeable as time goes on, which is, uh, costumes. Not that they feel like they're from the nineties, but like the police specifically just feel like somebody who's never seen tactical gear was tasked with making bulletproof vests and doing those kinds of things. So it just, none of that stuff feels, um, authentic. It feels like, like Hollywood made. And so that, that's kind of a little hokey. Another thing that has always bugged me with this movie is when you're being introduced to Hannibal Lecter, it's a fantastic scene going through the lockdown of this facility and gate after gate, after gate, after gate, after gate. And then they're like, all right, he's down on the left, walk past all these other creeps. And then you'll see him there. And that's the reveal. And he's just standing there. But then there's just a staircase next to his cell. Like, where does that go? Like, why is that not secure? Like, why isn't this just the end of a hallway? Like, it seems like you go through a lot of trouble to just have something else over there. Like, does it go up to more cells? Is it, <laughs> you make a point to have him like locked up in the basement with all these, you know, layers of security and the guard station has a little arsenal in it and all that kind of stuff. And then it's like stairs. My problem okay. with that scene was more the fact that Hannibal was at the ready for when Clarice walks down. Like he knew that she was just going to show up and he was prepped and at the ready. So that was more of my issue with that scene. And so I mean, it's a, a, it's a good reveal, but even then it's still. Yeah, the, there's a chair okay. set out for him. So even if they haven't told him that, hey, an FBI agent is going to come and talk to you, like he knows somebody's going to come and talk to him and then he can hear the gates moving. But no, it's very much an iconic villain reveal, not a, this is a logical flow of how this actual interaction would go. Even though there's a chair in front of his cell, it just seemed like he was putting in more of an effort for her because it, who knows who could have been walking down that hall to meet him. It could have been another guard just giving him his food and not like it would have been because they have set times for that. But it just seemed very much like here he is and he's prepped and ready and it's the villain being revealed. And like I said, it's a, it's a good scene, but how, how does he it's, know to be up and ready to, you know, stand there and things I like look that. At it as a lot of it is it's, it's his, his performance and that's how he's, he, he, he knows he's locked up and he's never getting out unless he breaks out. It's his entertain. He's entertaining himself. He's like, okay, there's a chair here. Somebody's coming by. I need to, perform my part and, and entertain myself. So, but menacing and, and, and good, um, as well as I do some interesting things with the lighting in there. When, as he steps forward, he dips into shadow a little bit as he comes out, which makes him seem a little bit more sinister as he comes up, you know, closer to the camera when he's looking at her ID. So, well, in the, the scene where she goes to the storage unit and then comes back where the lights are out, I guess because of the storm, but he's, in shadow yeah. throughout most of that scene until the lights kick on. So I'll, I'll say this as like a final dislike. The treatment of Clarice in this movie where she is getting hit on by all these different people. And I know that that's the point of the movie and it's the coveted from all these other men and things like that. But she's getting hit on. The, the psychiatrist when she shows up to the first interview that she shows up to for Hannibal, where he blatantly says, Hey, this, this town has some good, uh, this town could be a good night for you. If you know what you're looking for or whatever, however he phrases it. Yeah. Or the scene where she goes to the museum and that guy blatantly is like, yeah, I'm hitting on you. Or when they're running, th her and her friend are running through the training course and, everybody's and all the guys and, turn back yeah. to look at her. It's blatantly called out in the movie, which is why it's, it's a like and a dislike. I hate that women do go through this because it's an unfair situation that women are potentially treated like garbage just for the satisfaction of men. But in this movie, it is called out by Clarice. The situation that she had with yeah. Crawford, where he tells the police officers to take the uncomfortable sex act conversation outside 
But she says it matters because guys look to you. Guys look to well, you for to how to act. And she's basically in a man's world, trying yeah. to be heard and trying to be seen. And it, well, it's and hard that, for her because of yeah. it's a man's world. Yeah. And that's that one with Crawford is is he's as he's explaining it to her, he's like, I'm just trying to get them out of the room. Like, you know, and that's the way that was the tactic that I used. And she's like, well, no, this is why it's important that you don't. And, and, but that's part of that manipulation where she understands that that's how people see her and that's how they're going to treat her. So she uses that to, she does stand up against it. Um, with Dr. Chilton, the way she handles that situation is much different than the way she handles the nerds at the museum, right? The nerd of the museum is more of a kind of a playful, um, dismissal rather than a, you know, this guy's not a creep. He's just like, he, he's more, a little bit more genuine, even though they frame him up in a really creepy way. Like that one didn't come across to me. Like he's trying to get something from her. He's just, you know, he's genuinely interested in her cause she seems interesting. Um, and she deflects his advances in a different way than she deflects all of the other ones. Cause she deflects Hannibal Lecter as well. Like Hannibal keeps jumping into all of these things as if they're from her past as that there was um, trauma that was of a sexual nature. And she's just like, no, it's like, stop. This is not, the, this is not the thing that it is like. Well, and that's why, is, you know, that's why I say it's both like a like and a dislike because in this movie, it directly calls it out and her character basically fights against it. But the yep. dislike is the fact that it's effectively even being portrayed at all because it's not fair for women to have to deal with that in in any situation to just be blatantly hit on or mistreated or effectively sexually harassed because like the 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 therapist it's like ah you're that's inappropriate yeah, well, like come yeah. on but i think it's so. sort of just showing the the additional struggle that she has to go through as a woman yeah. Like, I think just completely pulling it out, discounting it just lowers her, her struggle. Yeah. Well, and, and then that's why it's, it's not something that I would necessarily, it would not something I would change. It's just, like I said, it sucks to see it portrayed because well, and- the, the differences between how women are treated and how men are treated. Like men are treated yeah. with more respect and like they're the strong, powerful commanding force in it. And sometimes she isn't seen that way. Yeah. So what would have been nice, I think, because uh, Crawford learns his lesson, like when he brings up like, hey, here's what I was trying to do. I, I get that that was offensive to you, but my intent was not to offend you. He's like, I wanted them gone because I wanted you to be able to do your job. And she's just like, yeah, but they look to you. That's why it's important. And like that's an important scene. But he's like, all right, lesson learned, message received. But then you don't ever actually see him apply that lesson later. Like he doesn't really stand up for her. She, he kind of just lets her raw off on her own. He's still kind of running plays behind her back, you know, using her as a pawn. So, you know, he doesn't really, really learn his lesson. He just understands that. Okay, great. I know that I'll let you run your show from now on kind of a thing. So, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you where it's, it's a good and a bad. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. That's the thing that happens and it's, it, it's good in how they handled it. I will say back to the Hollywood body armor, like looking at it, it is pretty terrible. Yeah. It's... But it, it also reminded me of the scene where they think Hannibal's on the roof of the elevator and the one cop like climbs up on a ladder, like, and he's holding a handgun to open the, the latch yeah, and it's like, why is he holding a gun if he, his job is to open the latch? It's open like the latch. there's ten other guys like uh-huh. standing around. Well, and then he opens and, it, and then he like falls off the ladder. Yeah, it's it's yeah, the Hollywood just, thing because like, he's also climbing up the ladder, like looking around at everybody. Like, is it? Am I, am I doing good? Am I? Is this, <laughs> yeah. Is, are we gonna yell cut? Or is the scene still going? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, changes. With this movie, there there are like small little things here and there, like the the scene with Buffalo Bill and Clarice with the night vision. I don't like the fact that he was toying with her, and then he decided, "Oh, I'm now going to shoot you," because in my brain I'm thinking, "Well, if he turns out the light and he can see her, he's more likely just going to shoot her right then and there instead of 
toy with if her he and smart. follow her through. Oh yeah, he's kind of a weirdo. But yeah. even then, it's it's a scene that helps create tension, and you feel for Clarice as she's stumbling through the dark. The sexism in most movies, I would change it, but this movie actually talked about it and handled it from her perspective, and so it helps to create a sense of feeling from Clarice's side of things. So. It's one of those, like, I don't know if I would change it. I hate that it has to be talked about and how she has to describe it from her perspective. But it helps to create a, her how she feels about things. And it shows how the world of men see her. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to say that I would change the sex of them because this movie actually addresses it. I mean, I've talked about how I wish Clary's relied more upon her own skills and less upon Hannibal. But it creates a more interesting movie because she has to have interactions with Hannibal Lecter. So it's this movie is, I don't know if I would adequately change anything to try and make it better because the things that I dislike help to create an interesting story. And so I don't know if there is something that I would change to try and make it better just because everything plays its part to create an interesting story. Doug it. I think you'd probably just change the music. Yeah. I don't have anything beyond that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe um, some better tactical vests. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's, it's those things that don't stand the test of time, um, either filmmaking techniques or set dressings or, you know, just uh, there are those like, this is iconic. I think if you're going to study film, if you, even if you're not studying film, this is a good movie to watch. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it age appropriately of course um yes this was the, the, for me a lot of it's just more it's some of those filmmaking techniques that kind of came after this movie where like we, we talked about like the snorri cam like just there's scenes that just don't make sense to me based on how they were shot or edited together like and i'm not saying it's the fault of anyone in, in the making of it like an editor can only edit shots that were shot and a a, a cinematographer can, can only get shots based on the equipment that they have the same with the directors, those kinds of things. It's, it's the reason that there are reshoots in films is that they get to editing and they're like, this doesn't make sense. We need to shoot this other little scene really quick. Uh, and you can do that well, or you can do that poorly. And so people think that reshoots just mean that it's a bad movie. It's like, well, no, sometimes it was, there it's was connecting a technical the dots. glitch. It's connecting the dots. You, you sit down after the fact, you know, hindsight is 2020. And that what's nice with editing is that's your hindsight moment where you can go back and say, Hey, let's change this. And you can do that. So, that's just more of the things that I would change. Um, Cause as I think through it with that scene with Hannibal biting the, the guard's face as you know, having that as a snorri cam where you see the, the discombobulation of the motion behind him, but Hannibal stays in frame and it's a longer shot. Cause that shot's probably half a second. If that, I don't even know if I would do like know. a snorri cam for that because it would, I think with this movie and how they shot it, it would be that out of place shot that you would notice and think, why is this here? But they, 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 they do, do the have shot some. If, if they they do have some handheld, um, weird angle. Like there's a Dutch angle with it's handheld with Clarice driving to meet the first victim's family. Those kinds of things. Like, you know, it, it's there. It's just yeah. Like it, it's just a lot of those kinds of things that would change. Um, and the the weird, not even hockey pad bulletproof vests. Like <laughs> they use that as a pattern to just cut out foam and then covered it in black fabric. Like. Overall recommendation sounds like we'd all give it a thumbs up. Yeah, um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a movie that I've yeah. I've liked, and I I would recommend it. Of course, as you said, age appropriately. Cause yeah, yeah, it is one of the things like within the Hannibal Lecter film series. I I do like Red Dragon a bit more. I think that they some of the things we talked about with like Buffalo Bill not being as developed. I think they do that. It's it's effectively the same movie. It's they're using Hannibal Lecter to try and find another serial killer. <laughs> and it's a prequel to Silence of the Lambs, um, both in the book and in the movies. Um, but I think they do more to develop the characters. And I think so. If you're going to see Hannibal movies, watch them however you want to watch them. But I, I, you know, I do like Hannibal on its own. I don't like that one as much, but it, they're good. My final words are going to be like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, leave those comments down below. Let us know what to watch. Uh, tell us how we're wrong. Um, we would love to argue with you. 
about that. Um, fight us. Fight get us. The, <laughs> um, get in those comments and fight us. And yeah, we will uh, see you guys in the next one. Adios. See ya. <laughs>